Okay, now, throughout your essay, you will need to footnote your evidence and provide a bibliography at the end. And this is a guide to this often daunting task, which everyone is still scared of, even when you get to our age. So, yes, if you didn't come up with the idea yourself, or you're quoting from someone, then you need to footnote them to acknowledge where you're getting your evidence from. You also need to footnote ancient evidence. So there are several different styles of footnoting, and each person has their own personal preference. Now the important thing is to choose a style and to stick to it. Your footnoting needs to be consistent throughout an essay. Now if in doubt, just consult your lecturers or your tutors who will provide you with advice. And Tele's Angels also provides a short and easy to use style guide available for download on the Tele's Angels website. So www.telesangels.com.au And once again, if you have any pressing questions about it, don't hesitate to contact us at telesangels at gmail.com. Alright. So now, meet your two new best friends, Ibid and Opsit. So this is how we use them. Ibid is used when citing the same work in the immediately preceding footnote again. So if we take the example of Cicero in Catalina, I don't know how to actually say that. So when we're using, if we want to use the exact same source directly below, directly below this footnote, we would just have to use Ibid. Whereas opposite is used when citing a work which has already been used, which has already been previously cited in your footnotes, but it's not in the immediately preceding footnote. So we take the example of Miriam Lichtheim's Ancient Egyptian Literature, Volume 1. Further, you can see that it's being used down here, but it's not in the immediately preceding footnote. So rather than using an ibid, we would use an opposite. And also the Scullard example from Gracchi Tanera. It's not in the immediately preceding footnote, but it is being used again, so we use an opposite. Okay, now what is wrong with this referencing? I can tell you now there are five things wrong with this, with this piece of referencing. Anyone want to take a step? The yes, exactly. So the placement of the footnote, the footnote rather than being right after Pliny has to go at the punctuation just here. It has to come at the end of the sentence. So there are another four. And one's really pedantic, actually. Is it after the full stop? Yeah, footnotes come after the full stop. They do, actually. Yeah, they have to be oh, after really? the full stop, yes. Oh, okay. Anything? It's confusing between two and three. The footnotes? Uh, or something, the body of the text. So two relates to that sentence. Should be three should be hidden from the Yes, you're exactly right. Number three. Number three in the referencing, it should be ibid rather than opposite. So that was a good one. Um anyone else? There are another three things. Do you guys want a hand? Okay, um, just to move things along, um, the referencing style here actually changes. So this goes to orthodate rather than providing the full reference. So you, once again, you have to be consistent in your referencing. And um, number four, there should be page numbers. Ah yes, there should be, pa in the CR long reference, there should be page numbers provided. So when you're referencing journals, you always need to provide the pages that they occupy in their journal. And <laughs> The last one. There needs to be, there's no comma after et al. So, yeah. so it should look like this. Okay, now, yeah. um, moving on, we're going to play another little game. Um, what's wrong with this bibliography? It's not in alphabetical order. Yes, very correct. It isn't in alphabetical order. <coughs> There's another thing wrong with the order in it, of it as well. Chronological. Chronological, how so chronological? Like yes. Um, in reference to the classics, like Greece and Rome, ancient and modern sources always have to be separated. However, in instances like Egyptology, you don't, in studying Egyptology, you don't have to separate your ancient and modern sources. However, because it looks like we're studying classics here, you have to separate them. So. You have, to separate your class, you have to separate your ancient and modern sources, and ancient sources always go up front, and it's not in alphabetical order. So there's another three things wrong with this again. The page numbers in the 
doing on one top? Yes, um, all the articles need page numbers. That's a very good one. For which one? The beard. Beard? Yes, the publication details are missing, so it's not providing um, the year it was published. And something else. Look at where it was published. There is an inconsistency with that, actually. I, I'll just tell you guys. Um, it's this one, and it says England. So you always provide the city and not the country of publication. Okay, so it should look like this. You have a question? Um, when organizing ancient sources, do you do them alphabetically? Yes, you do them alphabetically as well. So both sections would have to be alphabetical. Okay, academic style. Often people think that they have this need to write complicated sentences in order to have a good essay. Actually, the opposite of this is true. It's so much better if you have a clear, if you have a clear and simple essay and that is considered the best academic style. Anyone should be able to read your essay and understand it. So please, think of your markers. They're marking like 80 other papers and they don't want to come, they don't want to read something that's exceedingly complicated because more than likely it will be read late at night when they've just got finished all their work. So yeah, just keep it simple. Okay, um, what's good academic style? Um, a good test of academic style is to read your essay out loud to yourself, preferably in a private environment. I know my parents still get pissed off when I read about ancient Egyptian pottery in front of them. So, yeah. Um, if it doesn't sound right when you read it aloud, then you should edit it. And here are some tips on the slide to help you, with, to help you along the way. So, clarity obviously is best. So say what you need to say in as clear a way, in as few words as possible. Uh, avoid colloquial or idiomatic language like Sheila or Tops. It just doesn't fit with an academic essay. Um, be very precise. Um, avoid adverbs that show your personal attitude, like luckily, surprisingly, interestingly. I actually use the surprisingly in one of my essay, in one of my very first essays, and the marker wrote in big red pen, "Why is this interesting?" So they will keep doing that, and it just shows. It really shows a bit of laziness in your. I'm writing. Um, also, avoid contractions like don't and can't. Say do not and cannot. Um, don't use question forms. Use statements. No one likes reading rhetorical questions in their essays. And avoid two-word verbs like go on. Use things like continue. Continue might have more letters in it, but it's only one word. And, that will, and things like this will save you um, words in your essays. Okay. So now, what is wrong with these sentences? And in, keeping with the, and in keeping with the pattern of today, there are five things wrong with these sentences. Not each is on one. Yeah, there are five things in total. Like, first passage should be an and on A. Yes, it should be an and on yeah. Very good pick up there. Also very clumsily worded. It implies that these gladiators require a large seating capacity. Well, actually, that one's not on there, but that's, yeah, that's actually right, so. In the second sentence, it sounds like Pliny the Younger is the name of the volcano. Yes, that's exactly right. Um, the most important thing, which is Pliny the Younger, because he's, talk he's the um, ancient Roman who wrote about the explosion, he should come up. It sh he sh his name should be at the front of the sentence. So there's another one in here. Back to the front? Or no? oh. Yes, it's a tautology. Excellent. Love your work. Um, so yeah, positive benefit. You just need to say one of them. You just need to say benefit, not positive. So um, there's another one in this one. Number four. Hmm? Yes, exactly. Go on. It should be continued because that will save you a word, which could be very valuable come word count time. And then the last one. Interesting. Yes, excellent. Get rid of the interesting to note because you will get big red pen over that asking why is that interesting. So yeah.